Hi, and welcome back to another NERPG development livestream. In these videos, I livestream the development of the NERPG Engine, a 100% free and open source role playing game engine designed in Unity and written in C. -sharp. These videos are unscripted and give you a chance to take a behind the scenes look at the unfiltered, methodical side of software development. For more information on NERPG, be sure to check out NERPG.org where you can find documentation on the engine, links to the full source code at the official GitHub repository, and downloadable versions of NERPG Alpha, a free game designed to showcase the features of the NERPG engine. If you would like to see more of this type of content in the future, then be sure to like the videos, subscribe to the Cohesion YouTube channel, or just leave a message in the comments telling me what you'd like to see. In today's episode, we will be continuing our work on the creation of an exportable package for upload to the asset store. We have removed most of the dependencies on third-party packages, spent a lot of time cleaning up all those references, so I'm just going to start by showing the current state of our dependencies. So what we do is go through and just hold down control and click on each of those uh, each of those um, scenes and then right click on them and choose select dependencies and Unity will go through and find all of the dependencies that are needed to create that package. And there's our list right here. And if we right click on that and go to export package We'll need to uncheck this include dependencies right here. And there, now you can see, so basically, the only external content we have here is this slim UI and the UMA stuff. And in our engine, we've just got just these animations, which are all public domain our own animation controller, and then we have some external dependencies here on just these uh, couple little shapes. And I think, I know I've got one more external dependency here, right, on this um, casting circle as well. So basically, those are the only three things that we have uh, external dependencies on. The rest of everything else in our package now is third-party stuff that's public domain or stuff that we have created. So let's see if I can find some of the other uh, some of the other stuff in here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, the huge mocap library stuff here. So that's all good. So what we're going to do basically is just go through and um, create versions of all this stuff that is, uh, that's our own because we've got GIMP here, which is a nice free version of Photoshop basically with pretty much all the same features. And so let's start with our casting circle four. This is a really cool sort of circle with runes around it. Um, it's only 256 by 256. So let's um, open it in Explorer. And then, I wanna see, can I right click on that and go open with GIMP? Open with, uh, choose another app. It's GIMP on my list here. Wow. Okay. Um, let's go find GIMP. Okay, there we go. So it looks like this, um, like basically it doesn't even have any transparency on it. 
is just sort of like this white circle. So let's um, create a new one and we'll make it a little bit higher resolution. Um, this 256 isn't very great. So we'll just create 2048 by 2048 here. Hit OK. And then I want to create like a circle, basically. OK, first, actually, we're just going to fill this whole thing with black. There. And then let's go to the paintbrush tool here. Increase the size of our brush. Uh, you know what? We want that brush to literally be the exact same size as this. I wonder uh, if I add a guide, I don't know if I can make this um, this paintbrush like snap to the guide, but let's just try it anyway. So we'll go view guides again in GIMP. I think it was image. Yeah, there we go. Guides, new guide by percent, horizontal 50, image, guides, new guide by percent, vertical 50. Hmm. No, I was hoping that I could hold down a button that would make my paintbrush snap to it. Uh, you know what? Actually, it is snapping. It's automatically. I see. Yeah, perfect. Okay, this is exactly what we want. So we're just going to swap the colors here to white, get our thing line up in the middle, and make a great big old white circle. And now we can just export that as a PNG. So, oops. Uh, have here we've got icons and let's create a new folder in here this one won't be icons it will be I don't know UI images hmm, I guess that looks kind of funny no matter which way I do it okay UI images and we're gonna call this any RPG example casting circle spelled properly dot PNG and I can hit export and then that looks okay I guess there isn't really many other options to choose ah oh, there we go um, Let's just see what happens with pixel auto format. Okay, now let's go back into Unity here. And this casting circle, I think, is used in the casting projector, uh, but I don't want people to have to edit prefabs in order to use this. Oh, hey, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, hey, Sergio, uh, how's it going? I had my export package box over top of the chat in the other window. <laughs> the casting projector yeah let's take a look at that um, no okay I have to find out where Maybe I am storing it already. In the casting circle. I don't remember exactly where this image is found. You know what? Let's just um let's just go look for that image and see if I go select dependencies if it's gonna tell me. Nope. So uh, let's try find references in scene, maybe 
Maybe I've got a reference to it somewhere in there. Okay, lots of different ones. These are all the action buttons and stuff. sure exactly where that's linked from. Okay, let's go down to that casting projector here. Ah, the material, the light projector. Okay, there we go. Got it. Okay, so we have a light projector material which has this thing right here, this cookie, basically. So what we want to do, uh, where is this exactly? This is in standard assets projectors materials. So we want to make this customizable, basically. I want to be able to set this image or material, basically, through through the System Configuration Manager. So we're going to duplicate it. Um, this game has credits. Uh, hey, sorry, I just saw that comment now. Um, there's a sources page with credits at nerpg.org and you can see basically the credits all right here so uh, some of these are really big so they're on their own separate pages but it's uh, it got lists of all the assets and their authors so perfect. Uh, we'll take this light projector one. We'll move that into the engine materials directory. And then I'm going to make a new folder for that for projector. light projector sure why not and then what we want to do basically is refer to this in the system configuration manager and make a new setting for it so we're gonna hop out of uh, hop out of there Go into the example game manager and I think I actually need like a new configuration here for UI. So let's just look at our UI manager. This doesn't contain any configuration, it's just elements. So then the system configuration manager is definitely the right place for this. So we'll set a we'll set a new heading for that. And the heading can be UI. And let's see. This is a 
material. Um, so I'm not sure how we serialize a material. Let's try private material. OK, that's good. Um, and we called this material our, is our materials folder projector casting light projector. So default casting light projector. And then let's save that and let's see if we can now go choose that. Okay, good, we got that, and we can pull it over. Okay, perfect. So, apply to prefab game manager. This is gonna be for everything here. And then we're going to select the, oh, you know what? We haven't imported that yet. So we need to import that. And Let's see, we've got icons, materials. I don't think we have like an images folder yet. No, not really. Okay, so we'll create an images folder here. And you know what? I'm just gonna pull the icons into images. And then I will create a new folder called basically like UI. And if we look at the casting circle, which is right here, casting circle, which directory is that in? That's in materials. Casting circle isn't really a material. Um, texture type is just default in 2D. So actually we'll be deleting these in a second anyway, so it doesn't really matter um, that they're there. So let's go um, into the UI folder here and import new asset and we'll go to any RPG, UI images, import the casting circle. And I think that looks okay. So now we want to go back to our projector material and choose that new casting circle right there. Perfect. So now we've got like just a really basic circle that we own here and we can use that for the cast targeting projector. And then all we have to do now is go into the casting projector Okay, and since this material can be set through the System Configuration Manager, just to make it really obvious, we're going to apply that to the prefab, the casting projector, and then I need to make sure that my casting projector UI element here has um, somewhere I think, do we have a reference to it? I thought I had maybe a reference to it somewhere. Um, because we have to turn it on and off. Okay, let's uh, let's go in here and just find any references to this cast targeting controller because we were referencing it from somewhere. We're referencing it from our cast targeting manager. And that is a singleton. And if it's a singleton, that means it definitely lives up here in our game manager. 
there it is right there, Cast Target Manager. Okay. And that's where we have the reference to the casting projector. Okay, so what we want to do then is in our cast targeting manager singleton in its start method basically we want to grab the reference to its material or the system configuration managers material and then apply that to the cast targeting projector so let's go in and do that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know how long it'll it'll get to to complete phase three. Um, I haven't even started looking into what's required for that. I mean, like in general, that's uh, MMO is considered one of the most difficult uh, technical challenges in the gaming industry. formatting and let's see public void configure default material and then what we want to do is if system configuration manager dot my instance does not equal null basically get a reference to our cast targeting projector and on uh, oops okay we're just waiting for it to compile on our cast targeting projector we need to get the projector component and then set its material so let's do that um, if cast targeting controller yeah if cast targeting controller does not equal null then projector temp projector equals cast targeting controller dot game object dot get component projector uh, UI design of menus <laughs> yeah, UI uh, UI is totally not my specialty. Um, one of the things I want to do, actually, though, um, I don't know how well it's going to turn out, is I'm going to be um, hopefully replacing the current UI elements. It's going to look exactly the same, but the idea is that the colors will be customizable, uh, so it's, it's a start anyway. Um, what I really need uh, is, like, if you know any graphic designers um, that are good at UI design or there are any, like, good um, public domain UIs out there that you've seen that are, like, redistributable um, with a license, then what I'd like to do basically is make the UI customizable. Like, the idea is I'll provide a basic UI and then provide sort of like all the hooks and ability to customize it and just like pop in your own images and buttons and such. So, um, it, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've spent, you know, hours and hours and hours in GIMP and Photoshop, and I'm still not like an expert at them by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, we have the projector, and if, uh, let's see, TMP projector does not equal null, then 
we want to go tmp projector dot material equals system configuration manager dot my instance dot and then we need to actually uh, add a property for this so default uh, casting light projector uh, my default casting light projector hey yeah no worries take care man okay uh, my default casting light projector and now if we save that then we can go back in here and we can get my default casting light projector all right and now our cast targeting projector should be fully customizable so let's uh, let's test that out I think So I'm going to save this uh, scene here, and that looks good. I think what would be kind of cool is to be able to also customize the image uh, on that thing. But let's just make sure that just like the basic use case is working first. So we're just going to load up into one of our example games here with, uh, with one of our guys who has all our spells. Actually, everybody. Uh, okay, what do we got? Um, object not set to an instance. Hmm. In cast targeting controllers. Ah, okay. Okay, so let's see here. So basically, this start method is probably running before the cast targeting managers start method, very likely. So this is the reference to the cast targeting controller. So I think what we want to do maybe then um, is we'll have like a like a setup or initialization method on here. So control A K F that'll fix the formatting, and then then we need to set that. Uh, let's see. So public void. set up controller and we actually um, we want to remove that and take this down here and we want to Let's see, we want to accept a parameter uh, for it. No, in fact, we don't actually. Um, so let's see, uh, if our cast targeting controller does not equal null, then we're just gonna tell our cast targeting controller to set itself up. Basically, it should be setting its own material. So 
going to have to get its projector component and then set the projector's uh, material. But you know what? No, we already have the projector component. Let's just go take a look at that. Right. Okay. Okay, I see. Yeah, what's happening there. Um, so basically, we have a reference to the cast targeting projector, but the cast targeting projector didn't have a material until that happened. Uh, so actually, in that case, all we need to do, we don't even need to get that. We just need to check and make sure the cast targeting projector isn't null. Then we set the cast targeting projector's material and then we can do the circle color thing. Okay, that's better. Um, and in fact, in fact, I, like honestly, I, I, hmm, I feel like this doesn't even need to be done in the cast targeting manager. I feel like this could actually be done in the cast targeting con controller itself, but we'll, we'll let it be done in the game manager because the game manager is kind of responsible for configuring other components. And maybe at some point we want some other stuff in here too, like changing the image out. So I think this will be fine for now. So let's pop back in, let it compile. Okay, and hit play, see what happens this time. Load game, go down and find one of our guys here. And we've got some ground effects. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, one, okay, basically I'm looking for like the meteor strike uh, healing circle. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Okay, um, it kind of works, but uh, that's rad. That's really rad. Um, we need to clamp that, so. Uh, let's go down here. I just want to take a look at the casting circle four. I think uh, if I spell that right, I'll find it. There we go, casting circle four. Yeah, wrap mode needs to be clamped. So let's just um, actually take a look at this stuff here. Uh, I don't know if mit maps are entirely necessary, but the important thing here is this wrap mode clamp. And I should make sure that the max size are set and the compression is also set to none just to make it look maybe a little better. So wrap mode is clamp and uh, 2048 is right, compression none. Let's just hit that and now we can try it again. So let's jump back into the game. play, go to load game, hit load, okay, so there's our heal thing, example, healing circle, mm. that's no good, I've seen these lines come out before, and I can't remember what is responsible for them? Let's um, let's go look for the meteor strike as well. Where is it here? Uh, meteor strike. Okay, meteor strike is nine, and healing circle is. S7. Okay, good. So the color change works anyway. 
There's our meteor. Here's our fire circle. It's not going to hurt us, of course. Okay, that's good. So, I mean, basically the cast targeting projector is working, but there's something going on. I think maybe I have to hit border mitmaps. Let's just look back at the oh there it is casting circle four here. The only difference, yeah, was just the border mip maps. Was check pretty much. Okay. Um I may I may actually have to shrink the circle a little bit. It may be, yeah, I'm not sure. That's just really odd, that whole like lines flying out of the edge of the projector thing. So we'll go play, load game, open up the player, cast spell number seven. Oh yeah, there we go, okay, cool. So border mitmaps maps it is, uh, border mitmaps. maps. I guess what that does is it maybe makes some sort of border around the mip map that proves it prevents it from stretching out like that. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, what happened there? Uh, okay. Huh. I lost. <laughs> okay. Somehow I lost the ability uh, to cast my targeting projector there. That's really odd. Let's uh, let's pause that and take a look at our console and see. What's happening there? Huh? Very interesting bug. Okay, we have a null reference here. So something wrong here basically we don't have a player unit object and we shouldn't be following the mouse I think uh, at some point our cast targeting projector should have should have disappeared but it didn't um, That meant that the cast targeting controller was active. Because I believe, like, this update method is going to run whenever the thing's active, so it shouldn't be active in between scenes. I think, uh, hey, the Yuki, I think Sergio is offline there. Um, but. If you just look on the homepage at nerpg.org and you look at the development roadmap down here, like halfway down the page, uh, that's where I have all the features and stuff. Um, as well, you can always just put in, like, file an issue at the GitHub repository if there's something you want added and just, um, like, add it as a. I think when you create an issue, does it allow you to choose the category? labels yeah there we go like enhancement or feature request yeah uh, and those will make it onto the roadmap too I actually I'd like to track the roadmap all in one place but um, I haven't played around with the github feature yet to see like if it's more organizable Yeah, no worries. Um, the website isn't like terribly, terribly organized yet. Um, I just sort of threw it up. Um, when I, I need to spend some time going back through and adding documentation for all of the, uh, all the different new classes that I've added uh, and all the different new scriptable objects as well. So let's see. Basically, um, like our cast targeting. Can 
controller here. I think, let's see, find all references. Yeah, there we go, set active. Okay, so this um, disable projector method, I think we should be trying to run that whenever we go between zones because it was active in between the zone there. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, basically, uh, if player unit spawned is null, we just want to return. So if player manager dot my instance equals equals null, or player manager dot my instance dot my player unit spawned equals equals false, then we're just going to return out of here because basically that'll present, prevent the null reference error. But the other thing we want to do is we actually want to set this thing deactive as soon as we go to unload a level anyway. So to do that, what we'll do is in the start method, we will subscribe to an event in the system um, player manager, level manager, something like that. So let's go see. I think it's the level manager we actually want to subscribe to. Or, no, you know what? It's the system event manager. Probably. Let's go figure that out. So the system event manager here. has a bunch of notifications and I just want to see do we have a notify on level changed on level unload okay perfect so this is actually what we want to subscribe to so let's go find anybody else who's subscribing to it and they're using this whole create event references, clean up event references architecture, so that's exactly what we want to do. So in our cast targeting manager, we're going to add some event reference subscriptions here. And it looks like we also need some variables. Let's just uh, close a bunch of this stuff. So that we've got a little bit cleaner of a window here. Uh, okay, so we want two variables, start as run and event references initialized. We're gonna put that up there because that's basically how we are tracking whether or not we've initialized these things and then on level unload we want to handle level unload yeah that's about right and then um, basically that's just going to be like a wrapper for disable projector disable the projector good so then we can unsubscribe from that that's good and then we don't need this code this was just some other stuff and good so now what we want to do is uh, the cast targeting manager is part of the game manager so it'll never get disabled until like the very end so that's good let's uh, oops, go back into here and so what we want to do basically is on disable we will clean up event references theoretically this gets run never like once when we shut down the game but good to have it there anyway Okay, 
so now we'll have some event references. When the level unloads, we'll disable the cast targeting projector. That's still not going to solve the bug necessarily, um, but at least we won't get a null reference anymore because of it. So let's just try that. We'll just see if we can go in and maybe reproduce that bug. And I think I saw what happened there basically. Um, I think I know how that bug happened. Not entirely sure what the fix will be yet, but anyway, basically, so we take um, the healing circle here, it's fine, we can leave that out as long as we want, and we cast that under ourselves, that's fine. Um, then we take the healing circle out again, and what happened here? Nothing, we're still fine, okay, and then we take the meteor sphere, we cast that, and then let's take the healing circle out again. Hmm. Oh, okay. No, weird, I'm having trouble reproducing that bug. I, I actually don't know how I made that happen the first time. Okay, well, I mean, I suppose, like, in the end, if I reproduce it again, I can always go fix it. Uh, but for now, that looks okay. Basically, it's working. We've replaced uh, that asset with something that we own. Okay, so now... Uh, what I should be able to do basically is just go delete all of those other casting circles because we don't need them anymore. So casting circle two, four, and five get deleted. And now everything in here is assets we own, so that's good. And there were three more assets that we had that we didn't own. Um, like UI elements. So let's just go through and try to replace those. And that was basically the X button and the less and more buttons. So those exist on the crafting panel. No, you know what? I think, uh, let's take a look actually, they might. So click that in a 2D mode. Yeah, actually they do. Okay, good. So basically it's these little things right here, these less than and greater than signs. So what we want to do is find those right there. Perfect, less. And we have an image on this button right here. So what's the best way to do this? Basically, I want people to be able to put images on these buttons but I don't want it to be there necessarily by default. So I think we're just going to actually keep that there and we'll just create um, we need a child that just has some text. Good. So this button right here is 20 by 20. We'll just make the text 20 by 20, and the text is going to be a less than sign. We'll change the color to white, and the font to liberation. I don't know if this is going to be any good or not. Um, Let's try increasing the size a little bit. That looks like absolutely terrible. Um, let's see if I blank out this button here, right, and make it entirely transparent. Wow, yeah, that looks really bad. Um, maybe maybe it would be 
better to just make my own icons here. So let's see. You know what? There's another way I can deal with this. Uh, let's change the fonts. If I look through this, do I get a preview of the fonts? I totally do. You know what? That's not bad, this Brayside one. want is basically something nice and thick, kind of like the existing one. So actually what I should be doing here is I should change that to bold. That's a little better. Um, what I can do is basically um, 0 0.5 scale everything and then double the font size. Maybe this has to be 40 by 40 then. Okay, that's a little better. And we actually want this centered inside the box. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay. Um, what's going to be the best thing to do here? Just going to set this to overflow. We'll make it small enough so we don't go outside the box, but keep it on overflow anyway. And let's start looking through fonts again to see now what's going to be best. Uh, we also want it centered vertically, so we'll do that because it's still looking a little funny. Okay, brace height outline, no wonder that looks interesting. Okay, so go back to our text and look through our fonts again. Okay, so good times is kind of a good, hey, what is this? Gullum. I kind of like that. That Gullum one is nice. It like sits, ooh, what's this one too? Oliver's something. You know what? Let's uh, switch these down so we can actually read their names. There we go. Oliver's Barney. Hmm. This one's okay too, toughy. I have no idea where I even got these fonts. Open Sans Bold. Let's see here, Open Sans Bold. This is a good candidate, because with a name like Open Sans, it means we know that it's redistributable. So I think actually, uh, you know what? I don't like the angle on it though. Unsteady oversteer is kind of okay. Tuffy is like by far the best. Tuffy and Oliver's Barney. And Ghulam. But out of all those, I think Tuffy was like totally the winner. Let's see where Tuffy's located. Oh, rad! Tuffy is part of Uma. We can totally use it. That's awesome. Uh, let's just take a look at the license. Uh, the public domain. Rad. Okay. Yeah. Tuffy is my new best friend of a font because that looks good in the UI and it's public domain and it's part of UMA, so awesome. So now uh, basically let's just do the same thing. Uh, we're just going to make a duplicate of this text component right here. Move it down underneath the more button and on the more button right here. Set the image to none and the color to transparent. Okay, cool. And now we'll frame all of our window frames actually um, that are using an X in the corner. But first, I just want to go see if we've got any more references in the scene um, to these ones that we just swapped out here. So let's like 
icons external and this, this is going to take a sec. Uh, this is going to come back either blank or okay we have some references still. I think any paged window actually will have a reference to this, so let's actually go look at this. Um, if I scroll, and that's these same buttons from the other bar. So basically, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to create some UI text. We're going to make the text 20 by 20. Set the font size to 34. Make it a left-hand arrow. centered all the way and whoops uh, use the toughy font here toughy overflow overflow set the color to white all right and now that's like invisible right now. Okay, and then so on the previous button here, we're just going to set the image to none. And then we're going to duplicate this component right here. Move it under the next button. change the direction of the arrow and reset the position okay good so like we can't see it right now um, basically because this canvas is turned off but that should work. So let's, um, there's also, let's see, a framed window right here. Uh, no, paged window. Let's see, do we have page, paged window? Perfect. So paged window is also a prefab that's used for anything with pages. And we have the exact same thing right there that we need to do. So create a UI text element, 20 by 20. Thirty-four font size. I think I forgot to set it to bold on the other ones. Tuffy font centered in all directions, overflow, overflow, I think I forgot to set the scale as well, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, Let's set this all to white, Okay, oh right, and of course, yeah, this actually has to be 40 by 40 because we set the scale to 0 0.5. Okay, there we go. And this is a left arrow. And then we can set the button to nothing. And 
and set the color to transparent. All right, that's good. And then duplicate this. And then onto the next page. And we'll just need to reset the position on that to zero. And then we will set the text to greater than. OK, good. So now our paged window, uh, you know what else we need to do? We need to remove the reference to that shape there. All right, that's better. OK, I think that's finally all good. I feel like we need to set the transparency on that as well. OK, awesome. So let's actually go back to the ability book window because um, I forgot to, to do a couple settings on the buttons here. So basically, uh, right, this needed to be 0 0.5 scale for everything. And then 40. Okay, that's better. And I think we need to set the button to transparent. And then if we go to this, uh, same thing, we want to set this to 0 0.5. I don't think it matters what the Z is um, because there is no Z axis on a like a 2D element, but I don't know. I don't think it's going to hurt to set that either. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So then going back to this button, actually, we have to remove that image also. And then probably good just to set the color to transparent on that. And then just make sure, OK, good. So I th think we're good now. So let's see if I attempt to find references in the scene. Do we still get references to these? All right, we totally do. Um, and that's basically, I think, because uh, we've actually got like a lot of paged windows. Yeah, quite a few of them. So let's open up our reputation book window variant, because this is a paged window. Now, interestingly enough, our variant here does not actually appear to have a reference to that image. So if we open that up, we find, yes, this is indeed the paged window underneath with no references to those images that our, that our thing was telling us we had references to. So I don't know if this is like another one of those issues where Unity is um, keeping hidden references around. It's pretty good at that. We spent 30 minutes last episode trying to troubleshoot hidden references. Um, let's go see, I don't know, um, find references in scene. Yeah, we still have a bunch of them. 
but you know if I go into the achievement window of course we're not going to find those references because I can click on open I can look at my buttons you can see there's nothing there at all and let's see if I open up my achievement window I'm you know back to page window and of course, obviously, there are no references there. But Unity is telling us that there still are. So I don't know if there's like some voodoo I have to do to make it decide that they don't actually exist. Um, I don't know, try find references and scene again. Okay, so like all of these windows here. It tells me that there's a reference hiding somewhere in here in the bank window. So I don't know, maybe let's go to the bank panel. Very clearly no references in there. We don't even have like back and forward buttons in there. So I don't know what's the best way. Maybe if we just look through the frames directly. If I look at this variant here, I don't see references there. Let's see, where else would they be? You know what, I think our crafting windows might have a few. I don't suppose, can I just copy that? Okay. Let's go into the crafting window. No, you know what it might be? It might be the crafting panel. No, no, and that's the one, that's the very first one that I fixed. Hmm. Okay. So let's see. We already checked our currency window, which most definitely is not using those anymore. Hmm. I don't know, maybe if I go file save, that'll help. Uh, let's see which other windows here might have those. Loot window is a type of paged window, but same deal, it's just a variant of the paged window, which means that it's got the same images as the paged window. So, what other windows might be hiding that? We already fixed the paged window. The reputation window is also a paged window. But if I open the reputation window prefab, we don't see the references to those images. I wonder if they're hiding like actually in the example load gain manager. Let's actually go down and just take a look at that. So if we go into the player UI, these are all in, gonna be in the pop-up window interface. Let's just turn that on for a second here and then actually go look 
like at these in here. So this is just the standard ability book window. If I open these up, same deal. There are most definitely no references to those buttons. Let's search by type, and we'll search by type image. And I'll just go down looking manually for references, I guess, because Unity makes it really fun to try to find references because it likes to hide them. It likes to let you delete them, but then still internally keep the reference around. See, the close buttons I expect, those I'm going to have to deal with, but it totally doesn't make sense that we're still keeping references to those less than and greater than buttons because there's only like two places that they should have been referenced and we removed them all. Oh, what's that? Ah, where are you? We got a next button here. Okay, skill book window. Awesome. We found one of them. So, can I paste that text? I can totally do that. Rad. Okay, good. And then we'll paste another copy down here. Move it under there. Reset the position to zero and zero. Set that to 2D. Except for these need to be 40 by 40. And for some reason, the anchors didn't come with it as well. Same thing, 40, 40, set the anchors by holding control alt, move it to the center, set this one to a right hand arrow, and then remove the existing buttons. Set the color to transparent. Do the same thing for these ones. All right, and that is hopefully good. Okay. So, skill book window type image. And let's see if we can find, there we are. So we're down here. And let's keep looking. Okay, so I don't see any more images at all. Basically, if we look through this and we look for all the images just keep scrolling through them. Basically standard Unity stuff. Mostly just blank images with nothing. Just more of our sample images. 
highlight lines. We'll worry about those later. Let me just flip this into 2D here. And then keep zooming through this. Close buttons, we know about those. Just a second, what was in the middle of that? Yeah, still white close buttons. So I think, okay, like basically looking through every single image in this scene, I don't see any more of these little buttons here. So let's save this. Uh, what's going on? Ah, right, of course. Yeah, so here's a really interesting thing. Um, basically, if you have any boxes that auto adjust themselves and they're on screen, every time you hit save, this thing will just automatically reset itself to unsaved. So what you have to do is take all the UI elements off the screen, anything that auto adjusts, and now when we hit save, it'll actually stay saved. Really weird thing, uh, not sure why it does it, but it really just seems to like to just go and automatically readjust itself after you save for no reason, thereby making it look like you never actually successfully saved. Um, might add that to my Unityisms list for my what to watch out for when you're working in Unity episode. Uh, let's see now if we can actually like find references in the scene that are real references and not fake pretend references that don't exist. Okay, that's good news. No more fake pretend references. Okay, good. So now basically all we need to worry about is the, the close buttons. So these are going to be basically in every window, um, specifically the framed window. And it's, uh, where is it here? Window title. Ah, right, no, you know what? It's the closable window a framed window doesn't necessarily need to be closable. Okay, good. So we've got a close button in the close window. And what we want to do basically is the exact same thing. So let's see, can we just paste yeah, that text? Good. We're going to move that up under the close button. Text can be 40 by 40. And it needs to be in the exact center of the close button. So control alt uh, click. And actually, that's really interesting. This close button is bigger. Um, right, it's 30. So in fact, this actually needs to be 60 by 60. We want it to basically take up the entire width of the close button there. And then we'll just set that to a great big old capital X. I have no idea what that's going to look like. Because unfortunately, like, it's impossible for us to activate this deactivated canvas environment to get a preview from inside of here, which is like really strange. Um, so like what we need to do, I think, is actually activate the entire player UI. And then if we go to closable window, uh, nope, apparently not. Uh, apparently we still can't preview that. Um, so maybe I actually have to go down and look for a real closable window. Not in the player interface, but in the pop-up window. So ability book window is closable. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't like want to show up. On a 
see, I have no idea why it doesn't want to show up. Um, like this canvas is active. This thing is active. Nothing. Yeah, that's like super, super strange. Um, because like if you look at the title bar and the title area and the title, we actually have a window title here, but it appears to be completely invisible. what reason oh you know why I know exactly why we got their alpha set to zero of course that was really silly okay yeah that uh, no okay ah there we go and we're not even focused on the right window okay that's better so now we can actually take a look at this uh, and get it figured out. And actually, you know what? I think that's why um, why we have that same issue right here. Let's actually just go back into the closable window here. Yeah, silly, silly, silly. I forgot about that alpha. It makes a big difference. Okay, and uh, that X button looks fine to me. So. Set that image to none, set the transparency down to zero. Mm. You know what? I kind of want that X to be a little bit wider. Um, maybe, right, maybe it just needs to be bigger. So this is 30% bigger than the other one. So we want maybe like a font size of 44. And yeah, that's a little better, I think. I kind of like the old X a little better. It's like a little wider. Let me just look through our fonts again and see if we can scroll through them without having Unity decide to recreate everything every time and automatically close the window on us. Nope, Unity's gonna automatically close the window on us even though we didn't tell it to. And all we wanna do is look through stuff. at that open sans bold you know what I think I actually like open sans bold better so we'll use open sans bold for the window title close things maybe uh, let's just reset the alpha on those to zero okay and Looking back at our skillbook window here. We have to basically do the exact same thing. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this text box right here. I'm going to move it up. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to move up. Uh oh, and apparently control Z, no matter how many times you hit it, is not going to undo that. Uh, great, 
So where does that supposed to go? I think it goes at the bottom. <laughs> wow. Okay, and let's try this again. Grab the text, pull the text up into the title bar, and then pull the text on top of the close button. Set that to a great big capital X. Use Open Sans Bold. Font size to 44. As soon as Unity stops compiling stuff on us automatically. <laughs> All right, um, I think this was actually supposed to be 60 by 60. And then we need to reset the anchors as well. And in fact, you know what I'm even going to do, because this is just really silly to be doing this over and over and over again. Um, engine prefabs UI. And I'm just going to call this close button text. I probably should have just done that a long time ago. Um, So there we go, close button text in UI. And in fact, why don't I even, hmm, nope, okay. Let's see, the close button is itself directly attached to the skillbook window. Yeah, so we don't really want to make a prefab out of that. Um, but we will take this image right here, set it to none. Okay. So then, let's see, that looks good. Yeah, okay, good. So then basically, we want to go through and do that to every single... Uh, whoop. You know what? That looks a little funny. Where was that again? Uh, so the skillbook windows close button is not set to transparent. And that's really odd, but for some reason, the text here, what is it? Why is it zero and zero? That doesn't make any sense. If I go into the skillbook window, it's 60 and 60. Okay, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a, what do we need here? I think it's a content size fitter we need. And yeah, uh, let's see, what else do we need to do? We need to add a, There's another, there's another element I need to add. Um, what is it called again? Layout element. And what we need to do is basically set those to preferred and those to preferred. And then add that to the close button text and add this layout element to the close button text. All right, and now it will be basically 60 by 60 no matter what, no matter where it is. So let's let the skillbook window save, I think. Uh, okay, and then if we pop out of there. Okay, interestingly enough, it's still there, but for some reason the anchor is set to the bottom and that doesn't make any sense. So let's go back in here um, and like it actually looks okay in here. The close button prefab has its anchor set to the center. But going out here, this one totally doesn't. Don't know why. Let's see what happens. Uh, if I, can I choose like revert? 
revert. No? Okay, what about anchors? Can I revert the anchors? There we go, okay. Okay, interestingly enough now, the text uh, is bigger than 60 by 60. Or I mean bigger, like it says 60 by 60, right? But what's the title bar, like the, oh, no, 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 I see. Okay, it's totally fine. I'm just getting confused by the fact that this uh, skillbook window here, uh, if we were to move it, is like halfway through that line. Okay, good, so all is good. Yeah, that's fine. Um, good, so basically we can take the skillbook window, where's its alpha here? Just revert the alpha on it. Okay, so now that we have a good close button, uh, that's a nice prefab, we can theoretically go dragging it around onto other things. Um, so there are a bunch of close buttons here. And basically we want to drag a close button text onto all of them. So we'll take that close button. Hmm. This one's already got a text on top of it. Okay. I think I'm going to have to take a slightly different approach here. Um, okay, let's see, close button. You know what I want to check? Only some of the close buttons have the X's on them, so we're just interested in those. So that's better. We'll grab a close button text on top of that one. Actually, let's take that, um, that added game object. Let's revert it and we'll go into the achievement window variant because this is uh, a variant of the paged window so then we'll take the paged window set its alpha back up and we'll put the close button text on top of the close button And we'll set the image on that close button to nothing. And set that. Okay, awesome. So now our paged window no longer refers to that button, but we need to go back into the paged window, reset the alpha to zero. Okay, good. So out of the achievement window and back onto the game manager. And now we can go look through close buttons to see if there were any, uh, another one, okay. So this one, yeah, okay, so the crafting window, basically, it's its own thing. So we'll just put the close button text onto there. Set the image to none. Set that back to zero. Right, and let's keep on looking through here for close buttons that have X's. Okay, so this one's going to be also its own prefab. So we will remove that image from there.
like when looking through these. Got the character panel windows, its own prefab as well. Pull the close button text over onto it. Remove that image. Set the color to transparent. Let's just save that for a second. And keep looking through our close buttons here. So we have one. And that's it, actually. That looks like maybe it's our last one. So our ability book window is also its own prefab. Okay, perfect. All right, let's save that. And now, uh, right, now we're back to that other issue where it's always going to reset its saved status. So we need to hide all our UI elements and save, and then it'll stay saved. Okay, so now what we want to do is do we have any references to that in the scene? No references. That is good news. So the only way to check and ensure for absolute sure that we don't have any references, because that scene search is like apparently just not very deep, is we'll have to actually do a full check on all of our scenes. So if I go to the example, load game manager, control. So we have two scenes there, hold down control, click that, three scenes now. Hold down control and click, we now have four scenes. Hold down control and click, we have five, and control click, we have six, good. So now we right click and choose select dependencies and then this will do a nice deep search. Find all of our dependencies everywhere. takes a little while. Okay, good. So now, if we right click on that and we go to export package, it's on the other monitor, it'll pull it over here in a sec, there we go, uncheck include dependencies. Okay, good. So now, let's see, UI, UMA, engine, animation, I think we've got it. Under the icons, we used to have the external subdirectory with all those icons. Okay, this is rad. This is totally, totally awesome. So now we have only our own icons, our only our own casting circle, only our own materials. Let's just scroll down really quickly and take a look and make sure we don't have anything else. Okay, that's that's pretty good. So let's see what's the best way to do this here. So the only thing left in our entire package, oh yeah, cool, yeah, so open sans comes from standard assets, great. So we're using liberation sans, open sans, all public domain fonts. Hmm. We've got this black.png. I'll deal with that last because this is this is pretty easy thing I think to deal with the little black thing. Um, 
for now, actually, what I'm most concerned about is this UI right here. So, Lato Bold. Let's go web search Lato font. Is Lato font public domain? Because if it is, we're good on at least the font side of that. Published under open source font license, right on. Okay, good. Without any limitations, commercial and non-commercial. Perfect, so uh, Lato font is good as well. That's awesome, don't need to worry about that. And let's bring this back in here. Okay. So the UI click I can get rid of pretty simply. Um, but the rest of this stuff right here is going to take a little bit of work. So what I want to do basically um, is if you look at our UI elements, let me, what's a good way to do this? Basically just pop into the game here and just show you. Um, okay, that's odd. Hmm. I think I've seen that before. That's so weird. All of a sudden everything is black. Um, maybe I have to close the export window first. I might have to restart Unity. This has happened to me once before, and I can't remember why it happens. Yeah, wow. Um, so basically, like, hmm, everything is blank oh, okay so main menu panel let's try opening that up okay so this is like just the strangest oddest thing um, Looking at this main menu panel, play settings and next game, exit game, it's very, very clear that this uh, text is indeed white. Okay. So the text is white. But when we go into the game, uh, now the text is white. Wow. OK, thanks, Unity, for randomly showing us black text for absolutely no reason at all. I literally didn't change a thing, restarted the game two or three times, and now um, we have white text again. So no idea why that happens. I think that must be like a bug in Unity or something. Um, so anyway, okay, here's what I was trying to demonstrate here. Basically, if you look at this, um, you know, we've got like this sort of gray background and this uh, like orangish outline right here. Um, and then this stuff is all orange. I think it would be cool to be able to configure this and make it multicolored like any color you want basically. Uh, so you could just choose the color picker and decide, hey, I want my game UI to be like black or blue or, uh, you know, 
orange or yellow like it currently is, or red, green, whatever, whatever you want. So um, I think there's basically like a pretty easy way to do that, and that's pretty much to just have like a whole pile of um, transparent items, half transparent stuff that's all white, and then you can just basically set the background color on it, and it should just change to whatever background color you want. So I think um, I'm going to save that for another episode because that's actually going to be a pretty big job. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of UI elements um, to change and like a bunch of graphics here. We pretty much have to make like. Um, versions of all these graphics um, but we also have a chance when we do that to really sort of raise the bar on stuff by for example nine slicing these so we don't get this weird thing where short buttons have like almost no frame on the side um, so I'm gonna do that uh, in another episode and that should be pretty much be the last thing, um, because this is literally the last thing that we have that's not 100% public domain. You know what, let me just, um, let me just look at Slim UI. I just want to see, because I mean, if this is public domain, then we can avoid ourselves a, a whole pile of work. Uh, 3D Modern Menu, this is the one. This is the menu we're using right here. And we don't have like a specific license. I mean, obviously this guy wants you to use his stuff, right? And he's got the full YouTube tutorial series on how the menu was created right here. Let's just go and see if he's got a license posted on his website here. Because unfortunately, like, if you want to recreate it, you can find the tutorial. Otherwise, feel free to use in your game, but it doesn't say feel free to redistribute pieces of it. Online documentation. Let's check that as well. So here's his website. Just temporarily allow that. Um, design. Wow, I think he's got maybe a lot of menus in there. Um, I don't think he's actually showing it on here. Okay, let's see. The version has been converted to C sharp system tips, player prefs. Okay. So, yeah, no license. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah, um, we pretty much are, I think, stuck. Um, creating our own sort of version of this. All right, no worries. We can do that. So yeah, uh, definitely going to happen in, a, in another episode then because we're getting pretty close to two hours. And uh, let's, uh, let's try not to make these things too terribly long. So as always, uh, if you liked uh, this type of content, then like the video, subscribe to the Cohesion channel, or just leave a note in the comments telling me what you would like to see in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.